So let's look at some examples for dimensional analysis. In our first problem, it's 3.9 times 10 to the fourth minutes, and I want to end in hours. So the first thing I do, the first thing that I do to solve my problem is I draw what we call our train tracks. What do we call this? I have no idea why, but that's what we're going to call it, train tracks. And I'm going to make sure that my label is over here waiting for me so that I know if I've done my problem correctly. So I see that we're starting in minutes, and we're going to end in hours. And I don't know how many hours 3.9 times 10 to the fourth minutes is, but I do know some statements about minutes and hours. So let's see if Caleb can help me out. Caleb, what's the connection between minutes and hours? How many minutes are in one hour? 60 minutes. There you go. So I know this statement. One hour equals 60 minutes. And I see that here's minutes and here's hours. This statement of equality can help me convert. So I want to get rid of minutes. Whatever I'm getting rid of has to be diagonal. So I write the unit first. Minutes. Whatever I'm converting to goes on the top. Hours. And now I write my statements. One hour, one hour, was 60 minutes. My labels cancel because they're diagonal to each other. And I check, am I done? Well, here's my unit, hours. I wanted hours, so I'm done. It was just one step. So I look at the math. 3.9 times 10 to the fourth times 1 divided by 60. So I plug it into my calculator. 3.9 e to the 4 divided by 60 equals 650. So I'm going to write 650. And then I'm going to ask myself the question of how much of that calculator junk can I trust? There were two types of numbers, measured and defined. This one is measured because it has a unit. This one is a definition. I trust all of this information. I'm not going to use this to determine significant figures because I trusted it. I trusted all 60 minutes in an hour. But I look at this one. How many significant figures are in this number, Hannah? So how many significant figures should be in my answer? How many are in my answer? Time out. Two. Sweet. Done. That's not going to be the case for all of them. But for this, it's done. I box my answer, I say 650 hours. Okay? So I'm doing it, you're doing it. Make sure that you're writing this down as we go. Let's do number three. So we're going to jump down to number three. The problem says 0 0.0070 weeks is how many seconds? equals something seconds. Well, I don't know this, but I do know some relationships between weeks and time. I'm going smaller. So let's make some statements. Allie, what do I know about weeks and what would be the next smallest unit? How many days? Seven. One week is seven days. What do I know about days and time, Michael? One day is 24 hours. Fantastic. Trying to get smaller yet. What else do I know about time, Carly? One hour is? Am I done? No. Nope, I need to go one unit smaller. And Adrian, what do I know about minutes and seconds? Uh, there's 60 seconds in a minute. Fantastic. I started with weeks. I now have connections all the way down to seconds. And so now that I know all of my units, I'm going to convert. So I'm going to start with weeks to days. So where does weeks go, Ian? Top or bottom? If I want to get rid of it, it has to go diagonal. Perfect. Okay. And then what should I convert to? Days. So days will go on top. I always write my units first and then I put in my numbers. So what's the connection? One week is seven days. Cross it off check, do my units cancel? Well, yeah, they do, because they're diagonal to each other. Now I'm in days. 
All right, Daisy, what should I use next? Um, 24 hours. There you go. So where does days go? Top or bottom? Bottom. And what goes on top? Perfect. 24 hours, one day. Days cancels out because they are diagonal. Now I'm in hours. And what should I grab next, Corinne? Minutes. Where does hours go? So one hour equals 60 minutes. Hours cancels out because they're diagonal. And now I'm in minutes. Am I done with my problem, Rachel? Nope, I'm in minutes and I need to get to what unit? So what's the connection? One minute, 60 seconds. Minutes have to be diagonal, so they cancel. And I check. That was the unit I was going for, so now I'm done. Now I do the math. Everything on top I multiply, 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 and I divide by everything on the bottom, which is all ones, so I just multiply. Point zero zero seven zero times 7 times 24 times 60 times 60 equals... And I have to ask myself the question of how much of this number is calculator junk? So, Scott, help me out. I have to, am I going to use any of these values to determine significant figures, Scott? No. Why not? Because you know them. Because they're all definitions. Yeah. All right, so I go back to the only number that they gave me, that one. How many sig figs in that number? Three, two, four. Well, let's three, check. Three. Let's look. Yeah. This zero is a placeholder. Is this zero a placeholder? No. Yeah, is yep, it? Okay. it is. How about that one? Yeah. Yes, this is a measurement, seven. So then this one's a measurement. So two. Two. Okay. All right, so we're going to look at our answer, and I need two significant figures, this one and this one. I start with the biggest numbers. Then I ask, does the three round the two up, or does the three fall off? It falls off. So the answer is 4,200 seconds. And you might be saying, well, what about all that other stuff? And I'm like, well, fair enough, but I didn't have that much information in my measurement, so I can't trust it. So the answer is 4,200 seconds. Okay. On a fist of five, five being I could teach this to someone who is gone today, and if it's being, I still don't know how you solve that problem, where are we at? Okay, perfect. So the rest of those problems um, are fairly straightforward with the exception of one. And that is we need to review all of the metric prefixes really quick. So kids have dropped over dead converting metrics. Kids have dropped Base unit, dead converting metrics. Now, there are more metric units than this, and that's what we need to look at. Please write this down, because I don't know if it's on here. Oh, you can look on the back of your periodic table. You can just check this out. All right, on the back of your periodic table, you notice that it has all of these prefixes for tera, giga, mega, kilo. Then we've got gram, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, and pico. Now, all of these metric prefixes are with reference to a base unit. The base unit is the gram, mole, meter, and liter here in the center. So if I had to write a statement of equality, I can take it to a base unit. So, for example... If I wanted to say how many megagrams are in, you know, like one gram, well, we pretend that there's a one right here, one times 10 to the zero, and I'd say that there are 10 to the sixth megagrams in one gram. So if I was using this in a problem, I'd say 10 to the sixth megagrams equals one gram. If I said, how many nanograms are there in one gram? I would go to my worksheet, 
with all the prefixes, I'd find one gram, here's one gram, and here's nano, 10 to the negative ninth. And I would say one gram equals 10 to the negative ninth nanograms. No? So that's option one. If you're like, okay, got it. Wonderful. Option two. Milli, then we go to micro, then we go to nano, then we go to pico. Remember that whole, if I convert from one to the other, I find the one that's on the left, it gets the one, and I find the one that's on the right, and it gets all the zeros? So let's say um, I needed to convert one picoliter equals how many liters? The first thing I have to see is that this is where liter is. Here's liter. And here's pico. So here's pico and here's liter. So I say, okay, which one's on the left? That's liter. It's bigger. So one liter equals, and here's pico, and I have to count all of my jumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ten to the twelve pico liters. Once I know that, then I just put it into my train tracks. If I start with one picoliter, I put picoliter on the bottom, liter on top, one liter is 10 to the 12th picoliters, and the answer is 10 to the negative 12th liters. Where did you get 10 from? This 10? Yeah. I understand that each of these jumps is a power of 10. So it's 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Okay. That's where I got the 10 from. Um, 10 to the 12th. Your homework is to complete the front side of your dimensional analysis worksheet.